Josh, 48 hours to go. Yes. Excited? Very excited. Uh, you know, there's no more training to be done, no like that. It's just we've got the way in to go. That's it. It's, it's go time. It's, I think at this start, this stage of uh, fight week, I start visualising it a bit more. I start giving it snappy, and and that's just natural. I just want to get in there. I've trained hard for the last 12 weeks, and you know I'm coming face to face with him now. And, and we're so close to, to getting in there and just getting on, so I can't wait to go. You say 12 weeks, but there's a life's work gone into this virtually, isn't it, for you to get to this stage? And, and it is another step on the ladder, isn't it? Yeah, listen, this I treat every fight like it's it's me, my last fight. You know, I stay in an hotel, hotel room before um, I go to the venue. Uh, I hug my missus, give it a kiss like I'm never going to see it again, and that's how I treat the fights. As soon as I walk into that venue, it's all or nothing. Um, and yeah, we've come so far. You know, won every title there is to win apart from world, and now I've set my goal and ambition on that. I'm not going to slip up now. Um, like I say, this is years and years of hard graft, blood, sweat, and tears, many punches to head, many punches thrown. Um, but I don't want to slip up now. I want to continue until I've achieved what I've achieved, and that's bringing a world title back to Leeds. Dennis says he feels you're overlooking him. He says you're looking one step down the line at a world title. Yeah, well, obviously, you've got to have an idea of where you want to go, you've got to have a vision, you've got to have a focus and my focus is to win that world title, I've jumped about it many times, it's, that's like when I first started my, my career as a professional, I wanted to win the British title, that's not to say I wasn't looking at whether my pro debut war and the second fight and the third fight, I always kept on thinking about the British title, even though I was nowhere near it, I was just climbing the ladder and that's just the same here, I know that Dennis is a fighter in front of me and he's going to come come and give absolutely everything he's been given a massive opportunity he's just come off a technical draw and all of a sudden he's a final eliminator for the world title so he's been proper gifted and he's going to fight out of his skin he probably trained at the hardest he's ever trained but I've been there I've done the R12 rounds I fought the 7 foot giant Japanese fellas I fought the little mean Spanish Kiko Martinez the, the Patrick Islands and, and the Joe Brunkners who've been all around the world I've mixed with that calibre and, and I know how to come through it I can fight on the back foot for 12 rounds if I need to or I can push forward and, for, and have an eye volume of punches and, and go forward so I can adapt but can he? Can he, he's only done 12 rounds once and to be honest with you, when he won that fight against Ryan Walsh, I think Ryan Walsh gave him the fight. Ryan Walsh went to sleep and, and let him take it. This time he's going to have someone who just wants to, to hurt him and want to take the fight to him. So how he'll deal with that, I don't know. Not only are you motivated the crowd as well, he's coming into your back garden for this fight. He seemed a little bit unsure when asked about how that he'd react to the crowd. It is a big advantage for you, isn't it? How do you how do you prepare yourself for that? You know, do you what do you do? Do you pack your gym out with all your friends and family and tell them to shout nasty things at you? You can't really prepare for it unless you've done it and experienced it. Like someone like Kiko had experienced it, he'd been all around the world. He knew what he was facing, but this guy hadn't. He's always had home comforts. He's a celebrity back home. They love him. You know what I mean? He's, they carry him about everywhere. He's, he's, this time, he's not in his comfort zone. He's coming to Leeds and it's not, just a, it's not just a stadium with a load of people in there. It's a load of people who I know or really want me to win and they'll be screaming and shouting and making it intimidating for him, calling him all names under the sun. He speaks English, he'll know what they're saying and it'll be hostile and how he's, I don't know how he's going to react when he walks out and he stands on there and they announce him to the ring. He's got to look around and they're screaming and shouting in his face. I don't know how he's going to react. I don't know that I've seen other fighters crumble under it. Joe Bunkner said he wouldn't, he'd never be intimidated by a crowd and by the time he got in, I was three rounds up. Every time I landed a punch, he, would, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know whether to react to me or react to the crowd. So and that's, the, that's the thing and that's uh, the advantage I have of having them behind me. You're going to have Gatano Berardi having a word with him before the fight starts. He's one of your uh, lead walk-on guys, isn't he? Him and Danny Maguire, what's the thoughts behind those two? Listen, if, uh, if I don't chin him, Gatano will be in and uh, chin him out, certainly. But listen... Obviously, Danny Maguire played out of his skin in the grand final and, and with it being his last season in Leeds, it only made sense to have him a you know, ring walk. I asked him a couple of weeks back if he would come into the fight. He said, yeah. I said, could you you know, join us on the ring walk? I'd be honoured if you said, yeah. And he, he said, no, I'd, I'd love to. So it's, it's massive. And not only that, Gaetano has, has become a bit of a cult hero in the stands, hasn't he? You know, with his no-nonsense, 50-50s and, uh, and his die-hard attitude. So, uh, 
you know, I think them two will just add a little bit more atmosphere, a little more, more spike, and it'll get me pumped up. I don't want to be letting down, you know, a grand final winner and a, and a Leeds Rhinos legend and someone who could potentially become a big Leeds, uh, Leeds United legend and, and be part of a, pr a promotion winning team. I don't want to let them down and I don't want to embarrass myself in front of them, so I'll make sure I get the win for them, for my crowd, for my friends and my fam for my family.